What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to take a look at my older works. Alright everyone, so I had a conversation with someone and they told me like, oh, why haven't you made a video yet of your older works? And I really never thought of it to do it, I guess. And one thing led to another and that's what made me uh, go back into my old archives and create this video for you guys. So the purpose of this is basically try to show you a couple of creative works that I did in the past five years, which slowly transitioned into uh, freelance commissions as well. So if you don't know about me, uh, I'm a freelance graphic designer and animator, uh, and I run this channel called Dread Labs to help you become a better creative. A couple of weeks ago, I released a video uh, with a full timeline of my career. And if you've seen that video, you know that I used to be a web designer uh, and a DJ. And uh, yeah, I really try to do more work in the creative field and doing websites for small businesses isn't really creative in my opinion. Uh, at least not as creative as you can be with, for example, designing album covers. Uh, but yeah, so I thought it might be fun to see kind of like my transition into getting better in software such as Illustrator, getting, seeing what style I thought was pretty cool to do uh, five years ago and slowly see me transitioning back into this style that you probably know me from if you are familiar to me or my YouTube channel. So as we go on, uh, I'm probably also going to see if I can point out some imperfections or uh, in points of improvement uh, here and there. Uh, and also feel free to criticize my work as well because uh, especially in the beginning, I wasn't really uh, at the level that I'm at right now. And overall, let's just have a little bit of fun in this video. So before we actually dive in, I just want to say that you can get access to a couple of the work files in this video uh, if you become an inner core patron of mine. If you want to learn more, stick around until the end of the video. Okay, so I did a lot of digging and I actually found out a couple of like designs that I wanted to share. Um, and especially in 2017, there wasn't a lot to share with you guys. And that's because uh, at this point, I mainly did a lot of corporate stuff. And the corporate stuff I don't really want to show because it's kind of boring in my opinion. Uh, but the cool thing is, uh, I used to do my own custom clothing. I painted my own denim jackets and I sold those to a couple of people around me. I did that with my girlfriend at the time. And basically, uh, I also did a logo and this was probably one of the first Illustrator projects that I actually did. Uh, so at this point, I didn't really know my way around Illustrator at all. Um, the company was also called Ur Urban Warriors, which was pretty fun in my opinion. Um, anyways, the first thing I did in Illustrator was this sword uh, illustration. Uh, and back in like back in 2017, I guess I basically only wore black and white, so that was pre also pretty much the only visuals that I uh, wanted to make. Um, then I did this illustration of like a uh, knight's helmet com in a combination with a hat, um, and I I think I did this with the pen tool. Uh, I didn't know what the shape builder was. I didn't really know about like caps and stuff like that. And as you can see, if we zoom in here. Uh, you can definitely see that with the lines here. Uh, they are a little bit wonky uh, here and there. Also, uh, I didn't really know about like uh, varieties in width. For example, if I would have done a, something like this right now, uh, I probably would have tapered a lot of these lines so that they end up in a nice thin manner. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> overall, I don't really like the concept of this logo now, but yeah, at the time I really liked it. Uh, anyways, I took this a little bit further and I tried to uh, further my skills and I got to this like perspective logo and I actually ended up having this embroidered on a hat uh, and putting it on like a coach jacket I think and a t-shirt. I still have those laying around somewhere but I don't really wear them anymore but it was pretty fun to do and I might dabble around with it and you know make a new coach jacket in the future uh, if you guys want me to of course. So yeah, uh, not a lot of 2017, let's just move on to 2018. So around this time, I really started experimenting with illustrating. And at this point, I uh, got my first drawing tablet for my birthday, which was in January. And um, I didn't really have a lot of good equipment other than that. So it's, it was like a cheap Wacom tablet with a laptop. And basically what I did was uh, I started illustrating in Illustrator. And if you've ever done that, uh, you can probably imagine that that took a huge toll on my computer because nowadays I just paint in Photoshop or in Procreate. Uh, because then not every shape that you uh, put out turns into a vector. Uh, anyways, one of the first illustrations that I did in that year was from Donald Glover. Uh, this is also still on my phone case, if you can see here. Um, and that's basically because my mom uh, bought a phone case with my design on, on Redbubble, uh, which was how I sold my designs and tried to make money off of it. 
uh, when I started out. And it was just like a super nice time. Uh, you know, I used to like spend my Sunday afternoons uh, illustrating like this. I learned a lot from uh, Von Glitschka. He's basically like an Adobe Illustrator guru and he has a lot of courses on LinkedIn Learning. Uh, you might know that platform as lynda.com. That's what he used to be called. Anyways, uh, yeah, learned a ton of him uh, as well as from Tony Harmer. So if you are new to Illustrator and you have the budget to check something out, those are the courses that taught me a lot. Um, if you are a Donald Glover fan, you can probably see some of the references here. Uh, for example, the boat that which he left the show Community on, which is one of my favorite shows. Um, we have the logo of the Greendale, which also references the community. Uh, we have the Awaken My Love uh, album cover here on the flag. And we have the American flag and the eagle, of course, because at this point, uh, I think he just released this song, This Is America, which was, of course, a viral hit. Then I did another one of J. Cole. Uh, basically, uh, th this was a little bit of a reference to Lil Pump as well, because at that time he had beef with Lil Pump, <laughs> uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, I see a mistake here. That's not good, Tom. Wow. Anyways, as you can also probably see, I was a little bit of a noob in texturing. <laughs> I just put some textures on there and I think I did some opacity stuff. But yeah, I didn't really know what like different types of blend modes did and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I was just doing things to make it look good. And of course, it's way better if you know what you're doing. So if you want to learn more about textures, there's actually a video on my channel where I explain it a little bit more in depth. Anyways, uh, this is also at the time where I started taking design a little bit more serious. And uh, what I mean by that is I started interning for Barong Family, which is a label. And at this uh, label, I had to do a couple of album covers. And it was the first time that I actually worked for an art director with a design team. Uh, and it definitely helped me get better at what I do. So yeah, these are a couple of the Wrong Family covers that I did. I think this was the first one. And this was inspired by a uh, painter from Curaçao, if I remember correctly. Anyways, uh, this was done in Photoshop completely, um, as well as all of these. Uh, as you can see, this is probably one of the first times that I actually started experimenting with Chrome a little bit. Um, fun fact about this cover, all of these gems that you can see inside of here uh, are hand uh, moved. So there's no pattern here or an, anything. This is just all done uh, manually. And it took a long time, I can tell you that. So with this cover, uh, it's also uh, something that I really like is I made these dragons here in the bottom. I made them all from scratch. So every single pixel that you can see here uh, has been made by me in Illustrator. And if you want to learn more about that, I actually also have a video about it on my channel as well. And the link will be down in the description. If not, and if I forget, you can just get mad at me in the comments and I'll edit it later. Anyways, uh, and the last one, this is a collaboration with Jordi Aats. Uh, he is uh, a designer from the Netherlands as well, and he has his own agency nowadays. Uh, and yeah, I really look up uh, to him and he's a really good designer. Um, so what I did is I did the uh, mask here. I think, and he did the background illustration, which is really sick. And as you can see, this is very much a reference to like psychedelic artworks. Um, so yeah, really happy with how this one came out as well. Um, so yeah, this is probably one of the first album covers that I actually designed that were like the real deal, I guess. Um, and then around the end here, uh, yeah, the order is a little bit messed up, but yeah, I also did a couple of illustrations. Uh, so I did these uh in like a sketchbook and then i just scanned them in and digitalized them in illustrator or in photoshop i think not sure uh, but yeah i really like this style and if you want me to make a video about this illustration style let me know in the comments as well because uh maybe i'll uh, i'll get back to that uh, and this is one of the other ones um the quality of this one's a little bit bad but uh yeah i managed to find it and somewhere i guess Anyways, as you can see, the style of everything that I did here was like, there was like all over the place. There were a lot of different types of designs that I did uh, in like the first two years here. Um, but at the end of 2018, I actually did my first ever Ray Flyer. And as you can see, this is already like super inspired by that style that you can see uh, on like our design community nowadays as well. Um, and this is also probably the first time I got like familiar with like these most heavily influential designers such as Yuta Kawaguchi, aka Gucci Maze, or Safe Haven HQ, um, you know, those guys. And this is probably like uh, one of my favorite like eras uh, looking back because uh, everyone was like super new to me and I just loved like like exploring that style and, and not seeing that much like oversaturation of it on Instagram. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice time. And then we go to 2019, 
which is actually where I start like experimenting with these types of designs myself. And uh, let me just see. I think this is one of the first ones that I did. And I actually also made a t-shirt out of this, uh, which was bought by a couple of my friends, which that was pretty cool. I still have it like in my closet somewhere. But yeah, looking at this right now, I do like the gradient map here, but yeah, the colors don't really match up with the background. And uh, like I said, I didn't really know that much about texturing yet. So uh, yeah, I could, probably could have done that a little bit better because the texturing is kind of weird and all over the place. And I'm not really sure what's happening there. Um, and this text is like pretty sharp as well. Um, and like the image here, I know that the quality is supposed to be a little bit lo-fi, but it's just, I think this is just too low, I guess. So yeah, um, and I would definitely get this yellow more in uh, the same saturation as this yellow, I guess. Anyways, yeah, it's kind of fun to look back at that because it's already like more than three years ago now, probably. Um, still, I had tons of fun, like I said, like exploring this type of design. Then this is still one of my favorite works that I've done. And not really because it's like good, because there's a lot, of, lot to improve here. But I just remember feeling super inspired uh, by everything that's on here. And I love how it's kind of all over the place. And and like there's no, there, well, there's visual hierarchy, but I don't know. It's uh, it's really nice. And I just felt really inspired by the poster that I saw, uh, which had me make this poster. Uh, and as you can see, if you don't know, I'm a big Borderlands fan. And it's definitely inspired by Borderlands. As you can see, there's like the Bandit Technical, which is a car in Borderlands. You can see here at the bottom right as well. Then you see the Sawtooth Cauldron, which is a map in Borderlands. These saw, well, these saw blades are basically everywhere in Borderlands. And as well as the Leave Guns Here text. Anyways, this was just like a experimentation for me. Uh, I think there's also stuff going on in the background, but I'm not sure what's actually out there. Um, but yeah, I really like working on this. And this was just one of other like quick experiment. And I tried to, you know, uh, experiment a little bit illustrated with like these uh, sections in uh, that you can see mostly on Ray Flyers, as you can see here. And then uh, here you have it, the famous first plastic texture album cover that i did which is a fan cover by uh, for immersion by pendulum and it's also probably for the first like chrome type uh, that you can see here uh here at the top uh, i think i drew this myself in illustrator uh, as you can see i master finally mastered tapering lines in illustrator um but as you can see the the chrome at bevel and emboss effect i think the chisel is set to a heart and that gives you that like these hard harsh stripes and i really don't like those but i I, for some reason, I didn't really know how to fix that at the time. And yeah, looking at this now, the plastic texture is way, way too much like out there, I guess. Uh, and there's really no other texture other than like the album cover. Anyways, it's really fun to look back to. Then here we have the Tunguska cover, which is also something in, uh, inspired by Borderlands uh, because that's a uh, rocket launcher in Borderlands 2, as well as with the sky in 2. Uh, which is the uh, text that goes with that weapon card, I think. Anyways, uh, this is also one of the first incorporations of 3D because that mask is actually downloaded by me, putting into put it into Cinema 4D, and then like I did something with the gradient maps in Photoshop. But yeah, I, uh, this is probably one of the first covers where I started, like you know, being really satisfied with with the output, I guess, and and feeling that I'm getting better at this. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I still kind of like it just for that reason. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I'm getting more and more into 3D here because like this sphere with the like tentacles or whatever there are, they are, are actually also done in uh, Cinema 4D. Uh, and then it's some like color correction and editing to make it super vibrant. Again, I feel kind of feel like the, uh, the plastic texture is kind of ruining this artwork now, but you know, at the time, you just have to put a plastic texture on everything. Also like the sticker designer at the bottom. Yeah, not much to say about this, I guess. Other than like the plastic texture actually has a rainbow color texture over it, as you can see here. That's pretty fun. And this is actually uh, one of the artworks that uh, got released on a like one of the first major labels, labels that I worked for as a freelancer, which is also really nice. So this is uh, Shake It Down by Julian Sabulba and Ray Ray. Uh, I still occasionally work for both of these artists, which is really nice. And I also really dig that I, I was able to do like some tribal uh, shapes here on the sticker. Uh, and actually this uh, basically led me into working for Musical Freedom as a freelancer uh, for quite a while. 
uh, and doing a lot of different album covers for them. I'll show you a couple more in the next year, in 2020. Anyways, I also uh, did my first like animation with this as well, I think. Um, not sure if I have it laying around, but yeah, this is also at the point where I started being a little bit more serious about Cinema 4D and After Effects. And at the very end, I also started doing my first typography. So this is like around December 2019, and I basically sketched this thing out. And you've probably maybe seen this uh, sketch in a couple of other videos because uh, I've showed this before. But this was the end result and I'm really happy with it, even though that the legibility isn't that great. But yeah, looking at this now uh, and seeing how many like Y2K logos I see around, um, this thing was pretty much, yeah, it was quite ahead of its time, I guess. Um, of course, I wasn't the first guy to do this. Um, I'm not saying that at all, but yeah, it's pretty cool to look back at this and then seeing this like uh, almost three years later and seeing that this style really, really took off. Um, so yeah, that's 2019. Then we have 2020 and the pandemic hit. Um, but what I did was I just worked for Musical Freedom a lot. So if you don't know about Musical Freedom, by the way, it's a, a, a dance label by Tiesto. And yeah, they uh, commissioned me for a lot of different album covers. So uh, I just show I'm showing you a couple of my favorites here. So I really like the texturing and the noise here uh, on this. And uh, I'm probably gonna do like a tutorial on how to do similar stuff like this here because it's actually like all separate images so the the like flower is separate from the hands and then the background as well of course um but yeah i really like the end result of this one uh then this one was also pretty cool back in the day uh sesco used to be one of my favorite artists so it was also really cool to do an album cover for him i really like the typography of get it here but uh like the rest of the uh background i think in my opinion could be a little bit cooler uh, so this is one of the alternative covers that I came up with, with a actual self-made 3D collage with like these um, cautionary tapes and you know, like, I don't know, this in my opinion fits the, uh, the album cover a little bit better. Anyways, yeah, I really like how this one turned out. Then this is also one of my favorite covers that I've done for Musical Freedom, uh, especially because of the like morph typography and the 3D effect on it and the color composition. i uh, really happy with this one as well. And then uh, I also started doing commissions for Spinning Records, which is an even bigger label in the dance music industry for Kirby. Uh, so this one was for Superpowers. And a uh, cool thing about this is this also landed me my first full-on lyric video animation. And another cover for Earth Kirby, and this was released on Spinning Records as well. And I'm actually gonna play this muted because uh, otherwise I'm gonna get copyrighted, but this was one of the first lyric videos that I fully and one of my first real uh, big commission jobs. And as you can see, I did a lot more in Cinema 4D uh, at the time. Uh, I didn't really use uh, an external renderer yet, so this is all in vanilla. But yeah, really, uh, really happy with the result. Let me just scroll forward to do, show you a little of the rest of the composition. I like how you can kind of see me taking off from like learning Illustrator, uh, going forward to like combining Illustrator and Photoshop, and then slowly getting into 3D illustration and animation um so yeah and then uh yeah this is actually a warning because this is very vivid and like flashing colors and everything but this is also one of my uh, animation jobs that i did around the end of 2020 uh with a lot of different stickers so i all made these sticker stickers separately and then just put them in there so you have like a, a lyric video animation and i also really like the bouncing smiley balls here uh really like gives me that like ray five So yeah, um, it's probably a little bit weird without the sound, but uh, anyways, those are a couple of the animations that I started doing in 2020. And then around like halfway through 2020 or somewhere, I also started doing like still like some combined like work. So this is a combination of 3D work um, and some like Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, this is for a friend of mine called Ricky West. If you dig his music, by the way, he actually sells a sample pack on my website. So yeah, if you're interested in that, take a look at it. Anyways, uh, and I also did a little bit more, like I tried to do a little bit more uh, things in the style, kind of similar to what I do, but then also taking a step back and not doing everything in the exact same style. So I did this cover for the Galaxy uh, and it was called Bulletproof. Uh, cool fun fact about this is that typography is also done in Illustrator. And I took that back into Cinema 4D to add the flowers. And I really like how those came out, uh, especially uh, considering that this is also rendered in vanilla Cinema 4D, the, the uh, 3D typography here. And then the photo here, um, 
the, well, the photo wasn't taken by me, but I also uh, wanted to do this like plastic cover with a glown up logo of his on his forehead. And the fun thing is, this is actually a uh, mask that I made in Spark AR. So there was an Instagram filter. I put that on his head here. Uh, so so I like could nail like the shades and everything. And with the release of the track, we actually released the Instagram filter as well. So to, you know, promote the rest of the single. So that yeah, was really fun. Uh, going to 2021, this is basically where I graduated. In 2020, I also started Dreadlabs, of course. And like in 2021, I gradually started doing more Dreadlabs and less like commissions. And the commissions that I did were actually uh, like a little bit bigger. So uh, this was probably one of the last covers that I did for Musical Freedom uh, for the Bloody Beat Roots, which is really cool because that's a very uh, artist that I really look up to. And if you don't know, this is also, as you can see, done in Ink Lab from Black Market. So that's pretty cool. And this year, I also delved deeper into combining all of the different creative practices that I was good at, or at least I knew. And one of the examples for that is a logo I did for Nori. Uh, Nori is a photographer that I work with occasionally. And uh, basically I illustrated this logo and then I took that into Illustrator and from Illustrator, I took that back into Cinema 4D and rendered that to have this like neon uh, effect here. So that's really cool. Then another really cool job that I could do was uh, for Ray Ray. Uh, she was also an artist that landed me in one of my first big label uh, artworks. And it was a full on lyric video uh, where I did the full art direction, as you can see. So this is heavily inspired by F-Zero GX, if you know that. Um, so yeah, we have a lyric video here with like the racing, anti-grav racing. Um, also really inspired by games such as Wipeout. Uh, so really fun to come up with this like art direction, but also doing every part of the animation itself. Um, what I especially liked was like how in the beginning there's like this monster uh, behind the TV and you go into the TV to see and find out about the game. Uh, we also have the character selection screen, which, which I also really, really liked. Uh, and then we have a couple of visuals on the drop uh, and basically like have these spaceships battle these this big alien thing. Uh, so yeah, really, really, really happy with how this came out. And uh, it's also probably one of my first like really big Octane projects. So it was also really nice and learning Octane renderer. All right, so another one is I started working for Quintino. If you don't know him, he's a very big EDM DJ and I did a couple of like lyric videos for him as well as artworks. So uh, as you can see, this had me further explore uh, things like uh, Octane renderer. I also did a couple of uh, art direction jobs and artworks for Kirby. I actually don't have them in the folder here, but uh, that was also pretty fun to work on. And around the end of 2021, I think, um, we I did this other cover for the Galaxy, uh, Get Crunk, and yeah, I got to do this like cool, uh, well, Dreadlabs kind of vibe uh, can here. Uh, I just made it in 3D. Uh, so it was also pretty cool to make a whole wrapper around the can, because something that I really like to do in the future is uh, do a branding project for, I don't know, like a beer. So I would definitely love to do like a packaging design for, for a craft beer or something like that. And this definitely helps uh, getting me a little bit closer to that dream, if that makes sense. But as you can see from this folder, I'm gradually doing less and less jobs uh, as a freelancer and doing more for Red Labs. And then we go back into the year we are in right now. And I only have one job standing there. And that's basically the project for uh, Alex Black. Uh, I did this early 2022. Um, this is pretty much also the only project that also already got released. So a lot of the projects that I've been working on this year uh, either are still ongoing or they are yet to be released. So I'm actually not allowed to share them yet, which makes sense. Anyways, I did a album cover for him with an accompanying animation. Uh, again, combining like uh, and After Effects, Cinema 4D, Illustrator. Uh, so it's pretty fun. Uh, another thing that I was wondering is uh, if you guys were uh, interested in me doing a full on breakdown on how I made this album cover and the animation. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments because I'll just make it happen. So if you're interested in looking at more of my freelance work from the past, I guess, uh, you can click on my personal profile. Uh, it's on screen right now and I'll put a link down in the description as well. My Instagram here is kind of dead because I'm focused on uh, Dreadlabs that much. Uh, but I'll try to post more projects in the future. So if you want to give me a follow, there's a link down in the description. So that's basically a breakdown of some of my works from the past five years. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And before we end of the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. So if you don't know, if you become a patron of mine, you get access to all of my project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my Dreadlabs web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role. 
If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive videos and tutorials, as well as assets from a couple of the work files from this video. For example, I just released a video on how to do death metal typography. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, you want to learn more about it, uh, then you should definitely consider becoming part of the inner core. Besides all of these perks, you definitely help me support getting Dreadlabs up and running. Uh, basically, I don't make enough money off of YouTube ads to keep this channel up and basically make videos for you guys as a full-time job and pay my rent. So it definitely helps me if you consider becoming a patron. If you don't have the money for it, that's fine as well. Leaving a like, a comment and a subscribe helps me enough already. So yeah, with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs and I'll see you guys in the next video.